I'm Susanne Rose from Germany. I'm a mixed media artist and a stamp designer and I love making art because it's just my passion. I enjoy the process very much. I have a lot of fun creating art journal pages and I love to combine and explore different colors and different ways of mark making. After this course you will be able to create your own intuitive art journal pages. I am looking forward to see you there and let's make more art! Hello everybody! Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching from. Welcome back to another At Your Studio class. My name is Marian. I am super happy to be your host here today. Let me know in the chat where you are watching from. Uh, we are here with the wonderful Suzanne Rose, uh, mm -hmm. who will be uh, going through her class today with, uh, with you. So if you are ready to start making some mixed media art with her, uh, the link to all the materials that are in this video description is also in this PDF here that I just put in the chat. Um, all the information about uh, materials and everything else you need for the class is there in that PDF document. Um, and uh, we are streaming this class for free, but we will take it down right after the stream is over. So if you'd like to access the recording just for seven daughter, dollars, <laughs> daughters, no, seven dollars, uh, the link is in the <laughs> chat so you can purchase it right away as soon as the recording is available. Okay, um, so here's the link here as well for that. Um, it's a bit early where I'm at and I haven't had my coffee yet. So my words are kind of mixed around. <laughs> All righty. Um, and let me just see here if there's anything else. Uh, if you have any questions for Suzanne, uh, as you know, uh, she will be using a variety of materials. But if you have any questions about her process or her inspirations at all, uh, please feel free to put it in the chat. You can uh, all caps the word questions so that I could see it better. Um, and I will ask them to Suzanne throughout the demo or excuse me, throughout the class as it is necessary. Um, if it's not completely relevant to what she's doing at the moment, I will save it for a short Q&A session at the very end. All right. Okay. Um, I think that is all I need to say. So Suzanne, let's have you take it from here. Okay. Hi and welcome. And I'm super happy that you're here and I'm so excited to share um, this uh, page, this page with you and these techniques. It's my absolute favorite. Uh, before we start, I would like to share some of my alternate pages first so you can see what we are doing today. And um, it's all about mixed media and different textures and paints. And I usually use a fluid medium to create a background. And then I go on top with other mediums like collage elements or other paints, crayons, markers, all that kind of stuff. And today I would like to share how I build up such a page. I usually have no, um, no real theme in mind. I just have the colors that I plan to use. And for today, that's not a nice page. I also have ugly pages in my journal. For today, um, I would like to use this color palette. Um, well, that's not fixed for me, but these are my starting colors. And later when I play, I sometimes add something else that's just intuitive. Um, for today, I picked an indentrine blue a quinacridone red, um, some greens, uh, one with a little bit of granulation, and one from the core watercolors. And these are these high flow watercolors, um, which make some nice effects. And you will see that when I paint uh, the page. Um, I already have this. Uh, spot with blue and some texture that we've made with salt on the page that I'm going to create today. And I shared this in the 30 minute demo 
because I thought this has to be uh, dry on its own so I get a good texture from the salt. And I am going to share this technique with you on the other side and then you can see how I've done that. And in the meantime, I tried it and you can also use your heat tool to dry the paint with the salt and that will work too. So that will be no problem if you want to paint along or you start without this uh, texture, you can just do it and then use your heat tool. I want to create a different page on this side, so I just start with the blue in another corner. I always have two water, um, water containers here, one with my dirty water and one with the clean. I think that's really helpful so you don't get muddy colors. I keep this simple and I just add a little bit of the table salt to the paint. And this um, adds a really interesting and nice texture. That was a bit too much. <laughs> Is it just any kind of salt that you use, Suzanne? Yeah, that's, that's from the kitchen. I, it's not nothing. I think every salt will work. And mm. it's also interesting to use bigger ones, um, bigger, bigger salt pieces that mm -hmm. create a different texture. That also can be very interesting. I will now keep on working on the dry side of my journal. Um, the brush I'm using is called, I believe, a mop brush. In Germany, they call it French brush and this one is from Jack's Oops. Um, I don't know if it's only available in, in Europe or everywhere but these brushes I think are, are available everywhere for watercolors they take mm -hmm. a lot of water and paint and I really like that I will add a little bit more blue to this page um, just that I not only have this area, I want the blue also in another area. And I'm playing intuitive. I just add color and, and see if I like it. And I have no plan what to draw or what to paint in this stage. Later, I will make something that is kind of planned a little bit more. When I pick colors, I try to use colors that mix well together so that I don't get um, muddy colors or stuff like that. And this quinacridone red mixes really beautiful with the blue. So when you prepared that page, when we were doing your demo with the texture, yeah. Uh, clearly, yeah. the texture is going to be uh, an important part for this page. Um, oh, yeah. No? Okay. <laughs> well, I think you could also create this page with, without the texture, but it's mm -hmm. still visible in the end. And it's a part that is a bit more interesting later when it's finished. So, oh. But I think you could do it without the texture and you can also get a nice uh, spread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what I was getting at is that since you kind of started that and then you kind of use that as how you inform your next steps, like right now you're kind of intuitively painting circles, which I think is great. I love um, circles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, you know, and we, we talked about this last time too, you know, it's uh, it's it's how you kind of make those decisions and, and how you let one, um, I guess, uh, part informs the next part for you? Yeah, I think it's, it's real. I think they sometimes I see there's something missing and then I, I add something and mm -hmm. I try to keep the, the, um, the values uh, different. So I have light areas and darker areas and that's oh. something I think over time when you paint a lot, then 
to get kind of a feeling for it. Um, I don't know. It's difficult. Um, I'm going into the wet red with these core paints. And this is a really interesting effect that you can't get with every paint. Some um, usual paints have the property to also have a high flow. And you can just try this with the paints you have. It also sometimes depends on the pigment. And I really like how these push away the darker pigments and almost create a lighter effect in the darker area. I think it looks better in real life than on the screen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's a bit, um, yeah, it's just when you sit in front of it, it's a bit different. Mm. And this is also something where I know that the color is mixing well. So when I go into the blue, it makes a nice green. So what I also like to do is just use water with my brush. This is, by the way, a Da Vinci Nova Synthetics. Thin synthetics. It's also, I think, not, nothing special. So I usually don't buy very expensive brushes. I just um, try to use watercolor brushes. If you paint only with water, you can reactivate the paint that is already on your page and that can create really nice uh, textures. And here in this blue area, I feel it's all kind of the same. Um, and that could be a bit boring. So I want to add um, either a darker value or maybe something of the red. But I think I would go with more blue and just make it a bit darker by using more pigment. And also, um, I'm not afraid if I make something that I don't like, because later I can just add a piece of collage on top of those areas that are not not pretty. And so I'm I don't mind if something goes wrong. Oh, I don't know if you can hear this. This is our neighbor's rooster. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. But at the I don't, moment... I don't think I caught anything. <laughs> okay. He's really loud. <laughs> um, do you think about a uh, composition too while you're adding things, Suzanne? Um, not in the beginning. Um, I'm doing this um, to, to the end of the project. Then when I add collage elements and more texture and patterns with other mediums, then I, I think about what looks good and what doesn't. And I have never learned the theory part of composition. Um, I do this just with kind of a feeling, and I feel that looks good. What what helps is to have a view through the camera onto the page. That makes a difference compared to looking directly onto it. And also maybe taking a photo and then look at it. Also, mm -hmm. you can take a mirror and look mm -hmm. through the mirror at your page. That gives you also a different view, and often it helps to see um, where something is missing. I think we heard the rooster uh, a few minutes ago. <laughs> we got some okay. people in the chat <laughs> who did see, who did hear it. Okay, if it's too loud, tell me, then I will close the window. But we, we have it so hot here in Germany. Yeah. Um, and today it, 
it's okay. So I have the windows open to get a little bit of fresh air. I am under the roof, so it's yeah. a bit hot. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, I think uh, I think it's okay. But yes, uh, if it bothers anyone in the chat, please just let us know and we can address it. Although I do, I just like it when animals have their cameos every so often in our in our videos. I also like that. Um, I have loaded this area up with a lot of paint and now I use just water in my brush and I drag it towards the puddle and this can create really nice lines. And just to get more pigment into it, I I stand my book up a bit so the paint can flow into the areas. And then I just add a little bit more water. I also want to add a little bit more of the greenish tone. Almost neon, I feel. And what's also nice, you can reactivate the paint underneath and mix it into the new layer. It's also um, depending on the watercolor you have and on the paper you're using. On some papers, it's almost not possible to reactivate watercolors. That's the reason why I don't like hot press paper and um, very smooth paper, because usually then it's a bit harder to get the paint reactivated. Uh, we have a question here in the chat. Yeah. Um, how do you decide on which colors to use in a composition? Yeah, as I said first, I had I had these colors in mind. I have these color sketchbooks that I am keeping. I hope it's dry enough. Um, here I try out different combos and then I write down which paints I've used and which colors. And I'm inspired by uh, images I see, for example, on Instagram or by illustrations in books or magazines. And whenever I feel I like a combination of colors, I try these uh, in a cheap sketch pad. And then when I make an optional page, I can go through these books. I have some of them. Um, and pick a color scheme. And that's what I'm starting with. And when I'm working, I sometimes have the feeling it needs a bit of this or a bit of that. But that's also just, um, it's no, there are no rules. I just do it because I think it's, it's, it's a bit difficult to, ex to explain. I think if you just paint and do it over time, you will get your own kind of feeling for what you like and what the colors are that you want to use. Mm 